a hi in this video i will show you how to do an etl operation where we will leverage aws glue service to migrate the data present in rds database to amazon redshift as you see in this picture this is just a pictorial overview of my demo where you know i will be creating an amazon rds service where i will be creating a flavor of microsoft sql server and that sql server has a big database for example and that database in turn has a one you know application table for example yeah and if you want to migrate that particular database present in amazon rds services to amazon redshift service then we will be using you know aws glue services help you know which will help us to migrate this you know uh, the database present in the amazon rds to amazon redshift okay so as you know that you know amazon redshift is a, a data warehouse service from aws which will help us to you know uh, give it that kind of you know that much uh, uh, capacity that much scalability will be provided by amazon redshift data warehouse service yeah all right so this is just a you know over you about my demo now i will just take you to the you know quickly to the demo here so as you see in this you know in this screen so this is my aws account it contains you know i have opened multiple panes so that i can walk you through these panes and i will help you to do to achieve or i will help you to understand the you know this or particular you know demo of this video that is you know how do we migrate okay so how do we migrate the database present in the rds to amazon redshift okay so here uh, under rds you might already know that you know we have multiple flavors for example mysql sql and and etc other databases yeah but here i am focusing on you know microsoft sql server databases yeah all right so that was my just basic information so, okay so here as i said you know i have opened multiple panes which you know these are the multiple services of uh, okay so multiple services of aws which will help us to achieve this you know particular demo yeah all right so first one uh, to save the time what i did is i have created pre created amazon rds services of flavor uh, microsoft sql server yeah so when you create so how do you create so you go to the amazon rds just go to the button called create uh, database yeah and in this one i have chosen free tier because you know free tier you know uh, eventually you know help me to uh, uh, help me to uh, uh, help me to you know uh, uh, reduce some cost okay so that's the reason i have used uh, you know very um, a very low cost one uh, which is a, a kind of a free tier one yeah all right so that is a, that is how you can create it for example okay so i'm not sure why it is the, uh, throwing the error but you know it says that loading the resources cannot be a major version something so there is a, some you know aws uh, console level issues but this is how you know you can you know uh, let me refresh this console probably so that would eventually resolve the errors so this is how i did it in the sense to save the time because you know to create amazon rds services it will take nearby 10 to 15 minutes yeah similarly i have the 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 other you know the target the target service that is amazon redshift cluster yeah which is a data warehouse service so i have also created an example data warehouse service of type amazon redshift cluster all right and here also i have used free tier okay so you see this is my this is my you know uh, amazon redshift cluster okay and it contains so if i open the uh, query so you see this is my you know uh, cluster uh, query editor yeah so here as you see this is my cluster name under that one i have the you know databases for example dev is a, a pre created databases for amazon redshift clusters okay so under that one you will have a public schema under the public schema i am going under the tables and under the tables i have created the table called persons okay for this demo what i am doing is i am creating a, a kind of uh, you know basic table by running this command anyways this uh, sql command will be uh, uh, shared in my github repo and the github rep repos link can be found in this video's description all right so this is where you know i just i just went to the amazon uh, a query editor version 2 okay so how you how do you go to go to this one so if you go here you see go to query editor version 2 okay so once you click on this one it will redirect you to to this page yeah so once you connect to your cluster then you will be going into the uh, dev database after that you know public schema and inside the query editor you just copy paste this command and run and click on run okay so eventually it will create a table something like this yeah earlier by default the person table was not there and henceforth we have created it and i will go back to this one and if i run select star from the person's table so this table does not has any kind of database okay so this is our target you know uh, target database or target data warehouse service and in that one we have a table called persons okay so this table is a dark you know target table which we, in which data will be fed from the you know our rds services okay that is our main demo 
So here we were also talking about you know Amazon RDS services. So under Amazon RDS, I have chosen SQL Server. That is a Microsoft SQL Server. So, okay. So if I open this, all right. So I have chosen a couple of you know uh, very uh, easily available or or you know which will cost me less. Of course, that kind of services I have chosen here. You see the class is you know DB2 dot micro, and the reason I have chosen is you know uh, Sydney reason. You see this is my Sydney reason, and that's reason AP Southeast two is a Sydney reason. Yeah. And here you go. So these are the you know uh, engine data, and you see. If you go to the connectivity, you know after once once the successful creation of Amazon RDS services, you will have the endpoint, uh, you know endpoint information getting available in this pane, and the port number is one four double three. Okay, that is the default port of SQL Server. Yeah. And after that, you know this cluster is by default for your information. This cluster is by default sitting in a AWS given default VPC. Okay, so I have not you know created any def any any other than the default VPC and And scripted at the particular VPC, yeah. But here I am just using the default VPC for your information, yeah. And after that, it creates its own, you know, subnet groups, and these are this the my this subnet group contains these many subnets, okay. And the workloads are distributed across the these, you know, these subnets. That is what the that is what the Amazon RDS service does, yeah. And it also uses a default VPC, okay. So I will also walk you through these components, okay. So this is where. So this is where we are now. So if I can go back and tell you, so this is the our one of the component that is Amazon RDS, wherever we have created a you know SQL cluster, and here we have Amazon Redshift. Under that one, we have created a Redshift cluster. Okay, all are. I'm just using the you know free tier versions, and also we have the AWS Glue services. So everything what we do and which I show you here will be belongs to here. So okay, this service I just opened this service. I have not done any pre creations. I will just show you here in this one. Okay. So before I walk you that, I just wanted to tell you one more thing. So here, for this demo purpose, I have created one role called ETL Lambda Access Role. Okay, that is my just a naming convention. You can ignore it, but that is a role I have created and I have attached administrator access to it. One, yeah. Administrator access is nothing but a complete access to your, you know, our your your AWS account. Okay, that is for your information. Yeah. And okay, so this is the IAM side, and we go to the next one. So to the next one, that is, I just want you to walk you through the you know VPC uh, dashboards. So so if I go to the VPC dashboards, I have one VPC. You see, I have VPC and this is a default VPC, and it contains three subnets. Yeah. So if I go down, you see uh, uh, details. Okay, this is my VPC ID, which is a default one, and it contains. Okay, so it you see if I go down, it contains. This is a forward slash 16 CID range. It contains uh, some some subnets as well. So I will show you that one. Yeah, so so this is the CID details, and if I go to the subnets, so it contains by default three subnets. Okay, so any any AWS fresh accounts which has the default VPC will have a default three subnets as well. Okay, so that is a one more thing that I have can show you here, and under the route tables, so I I do have one default route table. So under that routes, okay, so if you go to the routes, you should have an IZW. Okay, so these are the default configurations you see. Yeah. So this this also you need to make sure. Okay, so you can pause the screen and just copy paste. You know, just try to copy whatever being shown in this video. Yeah, for your information, if you have got stuck into you know or any kind of you know while doing this kind of labs, okay, uh, or if you are stuck somewhere else, probably you can stop and 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 look at you know look at deep look, take a deep look in this configuration and replicate in your side. Yeah, and okay, so that is uh, and also I have a Internet Gateway that is IZW. Yeah? All right. So now I go to the next very important concept. You know, whenever you are dealing with the you know AWS Glue services and Red, Amazon Redshift service, yes, you should have an endpoint to your VPC. All right. I also sh showed you this in in my previous video around the you know uh, ETL with using you know S3 and the Redshift as a source and destination respectively. So here you know you need to create a VPC endpoint uh, targeting to the S3 kind of endpoints. that you can do you know just go to the uh, create endpoints and target your vpc and 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 choose this you know choose the endpoint type gateway yeah all right so how do you do it so okay so let me clarify you so here you know you can give just like a test and you see amazon um, um amazon services okay here you just type like you know s3 yeah and you see if you go to the s3 and you see there are two options so you just need to choose this one And under the VPC, select your default VPC, yeah. And that's all. You just go ahead and create your uh, service endpoint, yeah. So this becomes a very, very important topic that you need to remember. Yeah? And after that, I go to the final component of VPC, you know, for your information. So th since I am using the default VPC, I just, you know, I just wanted to give a glimpse on the inbounds. 
so here you know to avoid any kind of network level blockages for my demo i have allowed all the traffic for your information all right that that's how you can you know you can also follow the same thing all right so we are good with the all the components and i have walked you through the you know all the required components as well now the next task okay so next next task is you know as i say is as i said again if i can re recap again so here this is our source okay so for example when does this kind of scenario so comes in picture in the sense for example you have hosted your you know traditional applications or you have hosted your business application where the backend database is amazon rds microsoft sql server for example yeah and your table is you know getting bulky bulky day by day right and there is there will be a time will come you know where you know even you know just just retrieving a record from your table might take you know huge time which you you cannot accept that yeah so in such cases probably you know you might need to trim out your you know database or you might need to make your database very light so in such cases you might need to uh, have a scenario where you might need to transport this data which is a legacy data into the uh, somewhere in the uh, kind of uh, you know data warehouse like services like amazon redshift and from there again you can you know make your application interface from there or your business analytics can you know can interface to those and have the dashboards uh, machine learning technologies can be run on those uh, you know on these services and all so this is where the scenario comes in picture okay so that is where the, this that is what you know this uh, this demo will solve that kind of problems all right so now uh, one more thing so there will be a one more prerequisite so one more prerequisite in the sense to connect to the amazon rds there is a blocker what is a blocker uh, you know when i say blocker i cannot call it as a blocker but there is a prerequisite so you should have your system installed with the microsoft sql studio yeah so i have installed microsoft sql studio microsoft uh, you know uh, microsoft sql server management studio in my system and i have opened that microsoft you know uh, uh, sql server management studio okay so we will leverage this you know uh, ms sql studio uh this sql studio you know we have to use this sql sql studio only to interface in the sense to connect with our you know our uh, rds uh, at off flavor any kind of ms sql okay so in this case you know you need a management studio that is a sql server management studio and that is where i download in my system and just enable it okay now we are good now i need to connect it okay so as i said this this amazon rds is a very blank it does not contain any kind of my table but you know for this case for example this case you know i just create a dummy database uh, dummy database and dummy table and we migrate that table to you know amazon redshift service okay so let me do that so what i do is i need to connect to this with using this you know management studio so for this case you know you have to choose uh, a database engine yeah and if you go to the you know connectivity part you see there is a there is an endpoint just copy this yeah and go to the next step that is the next step in the next step in the server name you just put it something like this put a comma and put the port number that is a uh, one four double three okay that is this is how syntax is okay so if i so so just you know you have to put the your endpoint name comma and the port name okay and in authentication you choose sql server authentication only yeah so when i created my sql server and rdbms when i created my our rd rds sql server i have copied my username and password okay so probably you can you to do the same thing when you are creating a rds and redshift clusters so here you know this is my user id and password anyways i will be deleting this uh, for your information all right so i just paste the user id and just click on connect okay so eventually this should allow you to connect okay so while it gets connected i will give you one more very important hint that you know so that you know that would help you so here if you go to the you know if you go to the uh, connectivity connectivity and security there is an option called publicly accessible okay that has to be s yes. how does it has to be s yes in the sense when you are creating a you know rds database or there will be an option do you want this cluster to become a publicly available then that option you have to choose it as a you know that option you have to choose it as a, a kind of a publicly available okay henceforth henceforth you will see this okay henceforth you will see this option that is publicly accessible equal to s yes. yeah and then only i was i will be able to connect this one or else probably you might encounter the you know connectivity issues as well all right so now what i do is for this case i just expand to the you know databases and just create a, a dummy database yeah for example i just create a database and let me call it as a uh, uh, so let me call it some 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 dummy names as well yeah okay so under this i just since it is a sql you know sql server uh, management studio it is expected okay so it will take its own time yeah that is how that's the reason i you know i love you know microsoft technology you can say <laughs> i'm just joking so what i do is uh, um, yeah so while it takes some time um, 
uh, what I do is I just go ahead and create you know, a, a dummy uh, table, dummy database. So let me call it as a dummy database. Yeah. Okay, so let me uh, create the database and then I will create a table. So what is the table I create? I create some person table here as well. And these are the SQL commands. Okay, these are the SQL commands I will use and I just put uh, some dummy data under the databases, yeah? under the particular you know, table. Here you go. It takes some certain its own time. So be patient here. So I know we will, I will just walk you through the, you know, in and out of this demo. Uh, eventually you will get, you know, some hands-on experience around, around this, you know, very, uh, 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 very, you know, valued demo. I can say this lab is very, very valued, you know, in the sense it, it has its own value in the market, I can say. Uh, because, you know, this kind of job will be done by very, you know, high level experts, you know, in, in IT industries, I can say. All right, so what I did is we created one, you know, one uh, uh, dummy database, you see, our dummy database is, you know, uh, coming, uh, you know, up and running fine. So now what I do is I execute some query on this one and I try to create a table and insert some data in this one. So what I do is I just go ahead and click on the, you know, uh, a new query button. So if, when you are in the new query button, okay, so I am good to run this command, which will create a table under that database, which I created just now. So what I do is I go now here and just copy paste that command. Okay, so this is not a command. This is a SQL server, uh, you know, uh, SQL server uh, uh, command, I can say. In the sense, this is a, a, you know, SQL command. So, okay, so let me execute this. It will eventually create a table. Okay, so if I expand this one, eventually it will have, you know, a table underneath this one. All right, so once that is done, we'll go to the next step. So in the next steps, what we do is, uh, 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 under the next steps, okay, now we have created a table. Now it is time for us, you know, uh, to uh, to insert some data because we need to have certain data under that table, right? So for that case, I also pre-created some SQL commands uh, uh, which will help me to push some data under this one. Okay. So what is what was my table? So my table was something like persons. Okay. So let me um, uh, insert into this person table. What I am doing is so this table contains uh, three columns. One is ID, name, and email. Okay, with these data types. And now into those columns, I'm just inserting some of these dummy data as well, yeah? So for that case, I just execute this code. And you see the rows are affected successfully. Now, now let's go and check what is the data present in this, uh, you know, in this, um, uh, in this table. So what I do is for that case, I just run the SQL command called SQL star from this, um, from this table called person, yeah? And all right. So this, so this is just a, this is just a, since this is a demo, I'm just you know, uh, you know, mimicking the you know application table, yeah. Probably in your case, this this might be already there in the sense this person's table might already be there, or you already aware of the table that you need to migrate, yeah. So now we are done with the you know prerequisite from the RDS side, okay. So you see this table, so this person's table under dummy database is there. Now we will migrate this particular table to. RDS, okay, that is my target is. So where do I get? So when we argue, uh, you know, when we uh, uh, migrate this particular person table to this person table, you see right now, this table does not has any data. So it is blank, right? So no rows as of now. So what I do is I don't do any kind of mimic, but I just use AWS glue service and we eventually load some disk data in the sense we load this data present in this SQL server into the Amazon Redshift, okay? That is what the, you know, magic I'm going to do now. Okay, so first of all, so now we go to the, the, the last service, that is AWS Glue service. So whatever the things that I need to show you, which are very important to make these connections, in the sense, to build this bridge, okay? If you go back to the, my, you know, my, this, uh, uh, this picture, so here, here is the bridge. The bridge has been built by AWS Glue services, okay? So here we have to do multiple comp configurations. So say, say tight, okay? In the sense, I can say, you know, just be uh, focused here, so, okay? All right, so let's go to the first tables. No, first we need to create a connection here, so in the sense, why do we need to create a connection? So as I said earlier as well in the, my previous videos, so connections are required by the AWS Glue services so that it can fetch the data present in the Amazon RDS and keep it in a temporary database here. Similarly, it also needs a connection to the RDS so that you know it can query the you know whatever the situation present here on the Amazon Redshift service and create a temporary data, you know, temporary clone of our temporary copy of the database table uh, present on, in the Amazon Redshift, yeah? All right, so that is the, you know, that is the thing that we are going to do now. How do we do this? Okay, so to do that, you know, we have to create two connections. One connection will be pointing to RDS. So for that case, what I do is I just go ahead and create a RDS connection. So okay, just let me give the connection name as RDS. And here you see the connection type, we should be choosing RDS only. And the database engines, okay, so here you should choose the database engines. Okay, as I said, Amazon RDS provides a couple of, you know, multiple flavors of, you know, database engines. One is Amazon Aurora, MariaDB, Microsoft SQL, 
MySQL, Oracle, PostgreSQL. So here, I'm using Microsoft SQL, which is you know, uh, majorly consumed in the you know, IT industries. All right, so now let me go to the next one. So here in the instance, okay, so here is the, the, the AWS Glue is very intelligent, okay, it has identified the instance. This is our instance, okay, instance, okay, if I go back, and what is our instance name? So this is RDBS instances. So that has been identified. Now here we have to give our table name. Yeah, we have to give a database now. So what was our database name? So our database name was dummy. Yeah, so let me put that as a dummy. So what is a dummy here? So this is a dummy. I just put the dummy. Now here is the user ID and the password we need to put in. So user ID and password is I have stored. This is for RDB, RD, RD, you know, RDS. Let me copy this and uh, put it across. So, okay, so let me go to the next one and finish it, okay? So you have successfully created now, you know, RDS connection. So now to, to evaluate that connection, we have to uh, do a test connection. So here, you know, now, now this is the place, you know, where our IAM role, which I explained in the first, the starting phase, you know, that is where we are using now. And I do a test connections, okay? So what does, why do we need to do a test connection? In the sense, you know, eventually it will help us to, you know, tell like whether the connection between uh, the glue and uh, RDS is successful or not, okay? While it is checking the connection, so let me go to the, you know, uh, um, um, uh, let me let me go to the and and do a other correction another correction that is a redshift connection yeah so to do the redshift connection we have to follow the same step but here you know we are choosing the particulars belongs to the redshift yeah, okay so here we will be choosing Amazon redshift earlier we chose RDS now let me go to the connection and uh, the cluster name you see the cluster name is auto populated you see our cluster name is redshift cluster yeah and it is getting auto populated and here the the database is also getting auto populated. That's the dev, and uh, now let me how to put in the password of you know my user of Redshift cluster. That is a this one, yeah. So let me put it. All right, so that's all. It's it's very quick and very simple one, and and you see right. So currently, you know, um, it is evaluating the connections and the connection for the RDS. Now let me also do a test connections for uh, Redshift as well. Here I do choose the you know uh, lambda, uh, nothing but my uh, my role, yeah. All right, so there are two uh, test connections are being initiated. Uh, yeah, you see the RDS connection is successful in the sense this particular connection is now able to, in this particular glue connection is able to connect to our RDS cluster or you know, RDS MySQL, RDS SQL server database, okay? It is able to connect it now. Similarly, now we are checking for Redshift, okay? Now, after this one, we go for the next crawlers, okay? So while it is uh, checking the connections, let me tell you what are the crawlers, okay? So if I go back to the picture, I can help you uh, uh, in a very good manner. So crawler is a kind of feature from the AWS Glue services, which will, you know, which will crawl to the, you know, source and destinations and and get the, you know, get the information, get the complete data present from the source and destination and, and creates a temporary databases in the AWS Glue services, okay? That kind of, you know, future, we call it as a, you know, crawlers in the AWS Glue services. All right, so uh, so now let's go ahead and create the crawlers. Okay, so let's create a crawlers for RDS because RDS connection is successful, yeah? So I will go to the crawlers button. So you see, you need to go to the crawlers and, and you see, here you go. The connection for Redshift is also successful. Now we are good for the both the crawlers, okay? So let's go and add the crawlers for RDS first, okay? So let me call it as a RDS crawler, RDS, um, RDS crawl. Okay, so let me call it as RDS crawl. Yeah, and let's go to the next one. So let, you can keep it all these defaults. And here you need to choose the services as JDBC. This is very, very important step, okay? So you have to choose the data store as JDBC. And connection, we have to choose respectively. Since it is a RDS crawl, so we have to choose RDS connections. And this is the you know, very, very important part. That is, you know, you have to, you know, you have to give the include path. So the in include path, you know, we have to give uh, something so the syntax something like this okay in the sense in the RDS we have a database called dummy forward slash DBO this is very important okay so you have to keep DBO and forward slash persons okay so here if I go to the table what is the what is the table name we give we give the persons okay since we are migrating the persons table only so that's the reason you know we have added persons as a include part okay so this syntax is very important okay or else you know it will not work okay all right, so we go to the next one and uh, next one and here, you know, I have to choose the same IAM role which I explained earlier because that is a contains complete required permissions. But in your case, in productions, probably you need to find that, okay, that will, that task I will leave with you. 
now we go to the schedule in schedule you know frequency uh, or schedule of frequency that is uh, our run on demand yeah all right so now next one uh, a database so here database is nothing but you know don't get confused this is a a local database to aws glue okay so we create one dummy local database of glue that is what i call it as a temporary database okay so let's call it as a rds rds glue okay so this is our database I don't give any um, special characters, so let me give RDS glue. Yeah, so this is RDS glue table. And uh, this is optional, let's leave it blank and uh, we go next. And let's let's finish it. In the sense, right now we have, you know, we have created a crawler for RDS. And let me run this crawler, okay? Why do we need to run this crawler in the sense? Eventually, to perform the operation from RDS to Redshift, you know, we have to run the crawler once so that, you know, when it runs the crawler, it will go to the RDS, it will fetch the data, it will create a temporary database. When you run the crawler for Redshift, it will go to the Redshift and it will create a temporary database, okay? And once both data database, temporary database are ready, then only we can go for the next step, that is the creation of job, which I tell after this one, yeah? So for that case, I just go ahead and run the crawlers, okay? You see attempting to run the crawler, okay? So it is running now. So after the successful run, we should see one table added here. I will show you the table gets added here as well. Right now, we don't have any tables for our information. Okay, so if I go back to the tables. So if you go back to the tables, so you see there are no tables. Yeah, this is we are in the table pane. Yeah, I'll just clean up this, which will get confused. You see there are no tables. Now we are running some crawlers. I mean, since we are running this crawler, eventually add one table there yeah, for RDS. Now, while it is running, I will go ahead and create a crawler for Redshift. Okay, so Redshift. So Redshift Cloud, under the Redshift Cloud, I just go ahead and, uh, and and just call it as a Redshift Crawl, yeah? So this is a Redshift Crawl, and uh, let's give these details as of, as of defaults. And uh, here, you know, we choose the, again, we have to choose here, you know, JDBS. And the connection, this time I have to choose Redshift because this is a Redshift Crawler. And here, you know, we have to, we have to uh, give the, you know, we have to give the, uh, um, uh, a path okay include path something like this okay here if you go to the our uh, redshift uh, query editor we see our database is dev and this is the public schema under the tables we are pointing to persons okay so that's the reason i just copy this person and i edit this okay so this is what so this becomes our path okay so this is very very important i know you have to be very careful for this one yeah? and uh, in this case this in, in our case that is a that was our no path now let's go to the IAM. So in IAM, I choose this role and the run on demand is my frequency. And here, you know, I just create one more, you know, test database called red shift. Yeah, red shift uh, uh, table. Yeah. All right, so red shift table is created. Now uh, I leave that as blank and let's go to the next one. And we create, we create the crawler for red shift. While it is running for RDS, now let me finish up the crawler for Redshift now. So let, let me run this crawlers. All right, so now both the crawlers are running. So in the sense, eventually, we expect, you know, we expect both to create, okay, so both to create a temporary tables here, yeah? All right, so it will take, eventually it will take some time. Meantime, let me give some, you know, other, another backgrounds of this particular, you know, the particular operation. Why do we need to use the, you know, you know AWS Glue? For example, you have a scenarios, you know, where, you know, uh, uh, where, you know, your application uh, table has to be, you know, migrated to uh, Amazon Redshift services daily or on a periodic basis. So in such cases, this is the pipeline, you know, this is the, you know, uh, enterprise grade pipeline that you can use it, you know. Uh, AWS Glue is, you know, enterprise level, you know, it's an integration service which will help us to, you know, help us to migrate the data from source to destination. And in this case, you know, we are using something in the sense we are extracting the data we are transforming the data and we are loading the data into a, a destination. Okay, that is where I call it as an ETL operation. Yeah. All right. So now let's let's see. You know, if if these uh, you know crawler jobs got completed. So once the crawler job is completed and the tables got loaded, then only I can go ahead and create the jobs. Okay. Yeah. Or else you know, or else it it it, it really you know it really becomes you know unpredictable. Yeah. Here you go. The RDS crawler got successfully completed and it has created a table for us. So if you go to the tables pane and if we refresh it, 
here you go i don't i didn't refresh anything but you know you see dummy dbo persons uh, uh, table has been created if i open this you don't de you don't find anything but you know you find the schema of your table you see the schema of table is these are the column name id name and the string int okay so this is where this is what i call it as a a dummy in a sense you know what it is this is what this caller did is it went to the you know rds sql server uh, database it identified the table schema and everything it got the data and it eventually created a, a temporary table okay which will mimic that yeah and that is what it happened now now we go to the next one next crawler so in the next crawler you know i have just running the redshift okay, eventually in the redshift side also it will do the same thing okay it will go to the uh, redshift cluster it will check the redshift cluster it will you know create a, a you know a clone of the particular table and it will create the clone into local okay so this becomes a temporary table in a sense it will just it will what it does is it will retrieve the data from here put load the data into this temporary table and from there you know it will push it under this same and in the same another another temporary table and that temporary table has the link to the amazon redshift okay that is what under the hood it happens yeah and eventually finally you will load that data into the redshift okay all right so let's wait for a few more minutes uh, two minutes more so while it is running i'll just go here one more time to make your mind brushed up or you know refreshed okay so probably i just need to you know um, reinitiate the connection so here uh, we are doing you know we are doing the select stuff from persons okay so th there is no something there are something okay so if i go back okay if i go back so tables under the tables select stuff from the tables and persons okay select star from persons okay so select star from persons there's a syntax error here so just uh, copy this and run it and here you go so this table okay so this is the person this is the target table it can does not contains any rows but when i create a job and i run the job eventually that table gets filled nothing but you know that data get migrated here you go our crawlers for redshift also got completed in the sense that it got loaded in the sense it, it done its job yeah so if i go back to the you know uh, status here you go right so you see the table is added now and the status of the crawler is stopping yeah now we are good for the next step that is a final step now now as i said okay so as i said here you have one clone here from from rds to from rds you have clone one here from amazon redshift you have one clone here now you will be creating a job which will do this you know mapping and eventually load the data into the amazon redshift and that is what we do now so here for that case i go to the jobs add jobs and i call it as a rds f12 red shift you know lab so this is a job yeah and here i use you know that etl lambda which contains complete permissions rest all i keep it very default okay so you see i have not touched anything or you need to follow the same thing yeah i go next and um, and here you go so here you need to choose it very careful here the data source if I go back to the picture, data source is Amazon RDS. So Amazon RDS. So if I go to the Amazon RDS, so this is our dev public. Okay, that is a you know, um, sorry, our dummy DBO. So the the dummy DBO person is our, you know, uh, a data source. Okay, that is a uh, that is a you know uh, that is a SQL server. You see, it's a SQL server. This is a Redshift. Okay, Redshift over is our target. All right. So now uh, change the schema. So let me keep it default. So now it is time to you know uh, uh, ask for the targets. You see data target what is the data target our redshift cluster so i choose in the first option yeah? and that's all so now here you go this diagram clearly tells you everything okay so you need, you need to understand this one you are migrating this table present in the rds to you know redshift cluster yeah and uh, and finally you know i save this job yeah there is a button called save the job all right so here you go it has created the complete pipeline okay so now finally so now we are almost done off with the our you know thing you see here you know the job has been created now what i do is now we are left with our last task you know just last task is to just run this job yeah all right so what i do is i just click and run this job eventually this uh, 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 job running okay so this job running will eventually take some time okay so at the end of this job you know we should see some data getting populated under you know, our persons table yeah all right so let's wait for a few more minutes and and you know let's see okay it will eventually take two minutes okay i can say that so let's wait for this one and meanwhile parallel let me keep on running this one okay we will see some magic here you see i just keep on running okay oh, you can see this is a live you know live uh, you know uh, kind of uh, uh, fun yeah so here you go i just keep on running this command okay eventually this table gets filled 
from where it is getting filled it is getting filled from the you know the etl pipeline which we built yeah and here you go right so it is running some you know python job you know it is using uh, this uh, job is back in the background it is using the spark okay and that is eventually loading the you know data from you know amazon uh, uh, rds to you know amazon redshift okay which are you know uh, very you know very good quality service from aws okay i can say yeah these are like a, you know a enterprise grade uh, you know uh, database services from aws okay and now you know you are you know congratulations you are now you know at the end of you know a very uh, a sophisticated job you know uh, sophisticated are, are very you know uh, high techy job that you can perform in the you know it industries okay so this is what i am showing you right now uh, it takes certain knowledge it needs you know it needs to have a intense you know a knowledge grip on these services okay we have right now we are dealing with the you know multiple services okay we are pipelining each services one after the other and you are we are eventually achieving the required you know the the, the very valued data which is sitting in amazon rds is now getting migrated to you know amazon redshift service okay from there you know that becomes a kind of a data warehouse so when you say data warehouse in the sense it it will support a petabyte a petabyte scale uh, uh, you know storage okay and eventually that data probably remain there forever yeah all right so now let's monitor the status of this job you see it is currently running and we should see some magic here uh, eventually it is take it will take some as i said you know it will take 2 minutes okay minimum 2 minutes okay so here you go it has successfully loaded okay so that magic has just now happened the the data okay so if i can match you here you see this table okay this person table is now migrated from rds to amazon redshift service okay and i believe that you know uh, this job is you now successful that's the reason you know uh, uh, we are seeing that data okay so this job has done this one here you go the status is changed to succeeded yeah and in this you know uh, redshift cluster under that table we are able to see the data being populated here exactly as required yeah all right so that's all for now i have successfully shown you the things to be shown in this video finally kind request please do subscribe my channel that would really encourage me a lot so with that note thank you thanks a lot